Great Sunday morning to your family. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for our worship services this morning here at Mount Zion Baptist Church, 220 North Watterson Street, Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome. I'm Pastor Davis. It's November 15th. Come on into the sanctuary. We hope you're glad about who you are and whose you are. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. family. Pastor Davis here inviting you to our Bible studies in our church school on Saturday at 11 a.m. Our Bible studies on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Just go to our website at mtzionbaptistchurchkm.org and subscribe in the uh, panel where it asks you to put in your information and you will get a link from Remind that will remind you when it's time for our Bible studies and our church school. We hope to see you there. Welcome back, family. Thank you for inviting us into your home as you have week after week uh, during this pandemic season. Uh, we're certainly glad to be serving in this capacity of life as we learn to hear the voice of God, allow him to teach us, lead us, and lead us, guide us, and protect us as we travel to the next level of the journey. I call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. I was glad when he said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, it's in the name of Jesus. I thank you now, and I give you glory just for being who you are. I magnify your name, O oh God, for allowing us to be who we are. And I just thank you for another day's journey. You're such an awesome God. And we thank you for being such a great redeeming Savior. Dear God, we just come this morning inviting you into our hearts and into our minds, oh God, so that you can feed us from heaven until we want no more. Oh God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would speak a word unto your people that only you can. Strengthen them, feed them like uh, they've never been fed before, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would allow your spirit to fall in the land so that people would uh, begin to love each other like you commanded us to, oh God. Help us to come together in this time, dear Master. You know what we stand in need of. So dear Master, we just come to you because no other help we know. And dear God, we just pray right now that uh, you would have your way, do what needs to be done. We thank you for this capacity of life and we pray in the name of Jesus that you would uh, remove me out of myself this morning. Allow your Holy Spirit to, to rule and to reign and, and speak a word of life to these thy your people who are waiting to be fed. Oh God, we thank you today. for You are such a great and mighty king. Thank you for having a plan when we can't see our way. Thank you for already having it worked out, God, even as we try to figure it out. Help us, God. You see the situation of man and you see how we've lost our way in so many capacities. But we ask unto thee today that you would restore us and help us to put aside our differences and grab a hold to the things that connect us in you. Oh God, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what race or creed, help us to come together to serve you in spirit and in truth. We honor you this day. For it's all about you, Master. And it's everything that you're doing, nothing special we do. Help us to speak in our communities and, and, and call your children out of the hedges and help us dear God as we begin to get outside the four walls and go into the community like you've called us to to speak a word of life into the one who's waiting we honor you God and we thank you for the power and the strength that you've already given us to get this done with and we give you glory now and forever these are your servants prayers it's in Jesus name we pray amen our scripture this morning, family, will be coming from the book of Deuteronomy as we continue in uh, the text that we started in last week and we continue to talk about uh, the blessings of uh, being obedient to the Lord. And we're starting at uh, the 28th chapter where we left off, verse number 8, and we'll continue through verse number 14 uh, this morning as we continue to talk about the blessings uh, that uh, 
come when we're obedient uh, to the Lord and his plan and his will and his way. And we see uh, this man Moses as he, as he begins to explain to Israel uh, what the Lord's command is and what the Lord has commanded of us. And so as we, we talked about last week, uh, the blessings of, of being obedient. We're going to continue today with verse number eight as Moses begins to iron out more of, of what it means to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth and to do everything that he's asking of us and, and the blessing that he wants to pour out on us uh, for, for being obedient to him and his will and his way. And as we look at verse number eight, it says, the Lord will send a blessing on your barns. And that blessed me, family, because he's, Barnes is plural. That means it's going to be more than one. And as I continue in the scripture, it says, the Lord will send blessings on your barns and, and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord God will, will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you, establish you in his holy people, as his holy people, as he promised you in the oath, in the oath that if you keep his commands, uh, of the Lord that he's given you and to walk in his ways. Verse number 10 says, then all the people on earth will, will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. And the Lord will, will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground in the land he swore uh, to your forefathers to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in the season and, and bless all the work of your hand. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be on top and never at the bottom. And lastly, verse number 14 this morning, family says, do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, but follow or follow other gods in serving them. Family, may God had a blessing to the reading of his red word. As I was studying this text this week and, and the Holy Spirit gave me last week that, that we're going to continue uh, in the blessings of obedience. And I ran across a a uh, article this week in my studies uh, found uh, by written by an author by the name of Flora Richards uh, Gustafson uh, that dealt with the theme of, of the whole book of Deuteronomy. And uh, Gustafson points out that in Deuteronomy, uh, God was more concerned about the willingness of the Israelites to renew their commitment with him more than he was concerned about their need to recommit to him. He was more concerned about their willingness to commit to him than he was their need to commit to him. See, God wants his people, the article points out that God wants his people to obey him wholeheartedly. Thus, uh, the emphasis uh, that Moses places on obedience uh, to God and the commandments is, is in play because God wants us to be obedient to all of the commands. So the article goes on to say that in, in chapters 27 through 30, Moses celebrates uh, the recommitment of the covenant with promises of, of blessings from God, but warns his people of the curses that would follow disobedience, showing that God set the terms of the covenant of renewal. God was the one who put the terms in place. Now, the terms uh, of the renewed covenant included not worshiping false gods, not following the desires of, of a stubborn heart, and not abandoning the covenant with God. So the article ends in saying that the Israelites are to love God, to keep his commandments, and obey the laws. Family, I came to tell somebody this morning that we, as Christians, are to love God and to keep his commandments and obey his laws. Put a pen right there. Because Someone will want to argue, well, well Pastor, we, we're under grace and not the law. So, so how does this apply to modern Christians? Well, that's a very good question. I'd like to take you to the book of Matthew, uh, chapter number 5, verse number 17, where Jesus states 
Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Family, in other words, Jesus came, uh, bled, he was crucified, buried and resurrected to fulfill the law of God so that we might be free in him. They couldn't get it right in the Old Testament. So God sent Jesus to fix it to where it was fixed and never to be undone. So in essence, Jesus becomes the law and we are to live by him. He becomes the law we are to live by. And by living like him and in him, we therefore have been justified by his sacrifice. Amen. In the text this morning, family, Moses is, he's almost pleading with the people to allow God to love you. Did you ever think about it in that context? That all the blessings of the Lord that the Lord offers is in our obedience to him. Is he's, he's simply asking us to allow him to love us. And Moses points it out this morning. It's almost like he's pleading for the people to allow God to love us. And, and in doing so, he presents uh, these benefits of, of being obedient to God's law. And, and in doing, presenting those, those benefits, uh, he, he shows us all the blessings that God is offering, the abundance, and even the things that God has already freely given, even before we gave anything. Wow, that blessed me. So as I was studying, the Holy Spirit said, well, how I said to the Holy Spirit, how can I explain this to where it's it's so plain that anybody can understand? And the Holy Spirit says, that's easy. He says, especially to the people who have children, get this. He says, when when a person has children, they begin to understand this concept of living in a whole greater different context. It's, it's the simple and it's the simplest lessons in life, family, that teach us the greatest lessons. So when our children are growing up, we teach them etiquettes that uh, follow them well into adulthood that allow them to become caring and productive citizens. But before they become those citizens, we have to teach them and they have to learn to follow rules and regulations that we set up for them that include things such as honor, respect. Love, just to name a few. And there are plenty of others that, that include uh, honesty and even the dreaded curfew that we hated. And sometimes even our, the company that we keep. Many times as, as we teach these lessons, uh, we offer benefits of following the etiquette of the house. There are benefits from following the etiquette of the house. Text somebody and tell them there are benefits from following the etiquette of the house. So, for example, I remember when I was younger, we used to do chores and, and doing our chore, chores yielded us a small payment of some sort at the end of the week. And I think I, I remember like mama giving me three dollars one time. It wasn't much, but I was like eight years old. So three dollars was abundance to me, <laughs> an abundance. And it was a small gesture of, of her just trying to appreciate what I had done to help out around the house because I, and, and if you look back at it, our parents didn't have to, but they wanted to honor the idea that we were learning how to be responsible and we helped out around the house a little bit, but get this, the mere fact that they had already provided food, shelter, lights, water, and in this day, modern day and age, Air Jordans, and back in the day, somebody had them Jordash jeans. And, and you get hair done, nails done, and even some of the non-essential things that we desire. This thing uh, is, is, these things are enough, family, that, that those chores, without an allowance attached to it, that, that we should have done it gladly. But they were honoring us and teaching us through a reward system. Well, same concept. God says this is the reward for operating in obedience to my will, my way, and my law. And even when we couldn't quite get it right, he sent Jesus to show us how to get it done. Wow. 
one of the most popular things, family, that, that, that I observed this week that we like to do these days is called a, a DIY project, a DIY project, which uh, I'm pretty horrible at if I say so myself. Uh, pretty horrible sometimes. Until, until I watch a YouTube video. A YouTube video can show you how to do almost anything. Don't believe me? Try it. And, and when you watch that YouTube video, you see the professionals do it. And you go step by step and learn how to do what needs to be done. The family, get this. Jesus is our YouTube video. How many times in this life have we looked at a situation or a circumstance and then we stopped and wondered, well, what would Jesus do? And we take the approach that Jesus would have, would took, would have taken and then we realize that what God is putting, downloading into our spirit is what's best for us. Don't forget that. Jesus is your YouTube video. Another reason that, family, the blessings of obedience are listed First is because God is a God of love. He's a God of forgiveness, a God of blessings, a God of favor, mercy, and grace. Exodus 34, 6 through 7, in the Voice Bible says, Then the Eternal One passed before him. The Eternal One uh, says, The Eternal God, full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abundant in loyal love and truth, who maintains loyal love to thousands of people, who forgives wrongdoing, rebellion, and sin, yet does not allow sin to go unpunished, extending the consequences of the father's sin to his children, his grandchildren, and even the third and fourth generations. In other words, family, he's absolutely a God of love, but he is also just in everything that he does. And therefore, his celestial balance stays completely regulated all the time. And God is never out of sync. That's one thing we got to begin to understand. Sometimes we're in situations and we think, God, where are you? God is never out of sync. And if we're going to be in sync with him, all of our wrongs, get this, have to be balanced by rights. All of our wrongs have been balanced by the right and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If we would just dwell in him. Family, we're talking about blessing, the blessing of obedience this morning. And from the book of Deuteronomy, the chapter number 28, uh, verse number 9 this morning, verse number 9 and 10 points out that the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you an oath. If you keep his commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people on earth will see that you are called by his name and the Lord, of, name of the Lord, and they will fear you. Family, came to tell somebody that if we operate in the blessings of obedience, if we operate in obedience and the blessings that come from that, family, what this two passages of scripture, verses 9 and 10, is teaching us that, that you will be so favored by God that you won't even have to even speak of it. Nations of men will recognize that there is some special qualities about you that they can see, but they can't quite explain it. I've said it before. Uh, when you come into the presence of men, they will swear by you must be somebody famous because of the countenance that you carry and the power of the Holy Ghost that lives in you. I read this week in my Tony Dungy devotional. It's called Uncommon Challenge. Uh, for those of you that are looking for a good devotional that are, are, are sports uh, fanatics, Tony Dungy has one called Uncommon Challenge um, after the book he wrote called Uncommon. But when I read this week in, in my uh, devotional by Tony Dungy, he said the state of our faith in Christ will be reflected in the extent of the Christ-like quality of our thoughts, words, and our deeds. Be sure that the outside matches the inside. Right. And family, listen, we could stay right there for a couple of weeks because what we're witnessing in this day and time, we see people saying one thing on the outside, but, but on the inside, they're displaying something totally different. They're claiming Christ, but they're acting like Satan. 
I heard uh, Dr. Barber, Reverend Dr. Barber this week, he, he talked about how um, even in, in this political era that we're in, he says, you know, Christianity in the Bible is built off of Jesus saying, tend to the poor. It's built off of Jesus saying, welcome the foreigner. But then when a politician says it, it's looked at as socialism. And, and Dr. Barber ounded out so well that, that we begin to use this gospel for our own agendas. We begin to, to put it up as, as something that, a shield or something that makes us look better. But the truth of the matter is, family, if the outside don't match the inside, you're just lying. And everybody can see it. Oh, move on, Pastor. Deuteronomy, verse number 11. As we look at verse number 11, it says, The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. We're talking about uh, the blessings of, of living in the obedience of God. He's going to bless you with abundant prosperity, verse number 11 says. In the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and your crops that are even growing in the ground, the land he swore to you for, by your forefathers to give you, he, he's, he's going to give it to us in an abundant way that's so rich because now get this, the reason that he's blessed us so mightily with it is because now we have shown him we can be trusted with the abundance. We have shown him that if, if he gives us an abundance of, of wealth, we're not just going to take it and give it to the devil, but we're going to bless his people with it. That's why he, that's what living in obedience is. We become his bankers. We become his, his people that are, are the ones who are always giving. I always tell people, if you want more honor, you give more honor. You want more money, give more money. You want more love, give more love. Because what I believe, family, is that when you're giving an abundance of something away, God is going to keep you replenished with that something. Because now you've proven that you can be a storehouse for him. Hallelujah. You can be somebody who can be trusted with his great power to give out. I want to also point out, family, that there used to be this movie uh, called Keeping Up with the Joneses. I don't know if anybody saw it. Um, but the Joneses had the coolest gadgets. They had the latest and greatest of everything. And they made the neighborhood men and women try to keep up with, uh, with running uh, with them by, by running up a whole bunch of debt and desiring to have all the things that seemed to be so necessary for their lives. Until one day, the whole community figured out that it was all a false narrative by the big business markets to get them to spend money in all different sorts of unnecessary things. They even realized that the Joneses were all actors. Wow, get that. Their mom wasn't mom. Dad wasn't dad. And the children were all hired by these companies to create a fabricated life that projected a false picture of success and wealth. Family, I came to tell somebody, this is the way the world system works. And this is the way it's set up. It's to drain us and project false pictures to us what, about what life is really about. But the scripture points out to us this morning, God has promised that if we just walk in his obedience, uh, in his will, in his way, we'll become trendsetters like the Joneses. But we'll become trendsetters in the right way and trendsetters amongst men. And let me point out to you what a trendsetter is. Well, Jesus was exactly a trendsetter. He became, uh, before Jesus, things were, were somewhat cookie cutter outlined orthodoxy. But Jesus became the trendsetter because a trendsetter is somebody who people model themselves after. Much like the Joneses, except we find out the Joneses were hired. But God said, if you follow in my obedience, I will make sure that you become a trendsetter amongst men. Men will be wanting to follow you because they see the righteousness and they want to be in the abundance that you live in. Let's get back to Jesus. Jesus was a trendsetter. And I said, before Jesus came, everything was kind of cookie cutter. And some people want to argue that. But wait, what? But pastor, what about Moses? He was different. Okay, fine, good. 
I'm glad you thought that way because let me let me paint a picture to you about Moses. Yes, Moses was different. He stepped out for God. He was an awesome man of God. But in the book of Exodus, we find Moses was born during a time when uh, Pharaoh of Egypt had ordered all the male Hebrew to be drowned. And to protect Moses, his mother sends him down the Nile in a basket where he is ultimately noticed by Pharaoh's daughter. She adopts him as her own and raises him in Pharaoh's house. What are you talking? What are you getting at, Pastor? I'm getting at that. Yes, Moses had a rough start, but he lived in the king's house. He learned his etiquette and his ways. Well, okay. Well, what about David, Pastor? He was different. Glad you put a pin right there. Get this, David. And the Holy Spirit pointed this out to me so plainly this week. David was the great-grandson of Solomon. Y'all remember Solomon? Great king, great man of wisdom, rich man. He was also, he was the great-great-grandson of Solomon. He was the great-grandson of Boaz, who was also a rich man. He was the grandson of Obed and the son of Jesse. I'm not trying to discount David's valor, his, his story, or his strength. But what I'm getting at is that Moses and David had their mountains. Yes, indeed. But they also started at a pretty firm foundation as children, growing up into their roles as in, into their adult lives. Finally, what I'm getting at is that Jesus was born in a manger, married himself to humility and obedience and began to influence men like no other human had ever done before. This is why the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin council couldn't receive him. Coming from nothing, in his earthly manner, being able to tell the chosen people how to live righteously, and, and that was a huge offense to them. How dare this man that has come up from the slums assert himself and any, any manner uh, have the audacity to teach us anything Somebody caught that. Finally, I'm simply trying to say this morning, God says that if we would just walk in obedience, and I'm not saying David and Moses didn't, but if we would walk in obedience, God would allow us to be trendsetters. I'm talking about coming from nothing, that family who never owned anything. But all of a sudden you look up and you see God has allowed you to become educated in the, in the realm of, of, of favor. And you begin to turn, he begins to turn your situation into something that you never thought you could dream of. Family, I came to tell somebody when we are in obedience to God's plan, he has the power to elevate us to a position of power that catapults us from being, being a trend keeper to a trend setter. The difference in a trend keeper is, is that you try to keep up. And you try to keep something fresh and new. And the trendsetter, well, he's the one that started the thing. And what I'm trying to say is, family, that God, when we walk in obedience, instead of being in the number, you're going to be the one to teach the class. Instead of attending the conference, God wants you to become the keynote speaker. And instead of gaining a seat at the table, get this. God says, if you walk in my obedience, I'll make sure you're the one sending out the invitations. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse number 12 this morning, family. Hallelujah. That blessed me. Instead of being able to sit at the table, you'll be the one to send out the invitations. Thank you, Lord. Verse number 12, it says, the Lord will open the heavens. And the storehouse of his bounty, that's the best he got. The storehouse of his bounty. He will send the rain to your land in the season of rain. And, and to be blessed, he's going to bless all the work of your hands. All the work of your hand. You'll lend to many nations. And you won't borrow from any. Family, that preaches that the blessings will seem to be automatic. And your focus, get this, your focus will no longer be on how we're going to make it. Your focus will become, now I, I'm able to focus on ministry. 
and how I can serve better because the financial woes are no longer an issue. Time has become more abundant and, and we begin to do things we're passionate about and the things that we love versus having to be limited in what we can do because of work obligations or other things that we have to do. Family, God is saying that, that ministry will, have, will now have become work. And that this is the work that you'll become, be able to do daily because God is taking complete control over the other situations, freeing us up to serve. I don't know who this is for, but that, that's the day I'm looking for. That I'm not worried about those other things because I begin to walk in the obedience of God so uh, narrowly that, that he's taking care of everything else. And all I got to do is show up and serve. Thank you, Lord. All I got to do is be in his presence and be a blessing unto them I come in contact with. Hallelujah. All I got to do is be there to serve. I don't know who this is for this morning. The Lord said, you be obedient unto me. And I'll make it to where everything you need will run to your feet and serve you as you serve me. I want to share with you that, that when I was in college, me and my homeboy, who, who's a police officer in the Columbia area, we, we were in college and we discussed the fulfillment of love in, in the day that we can anonymously just write a check to the church or, or an organization for $100,000 and just drop it in the plate anonymously with no thoughts about where the money is, is if the check is going to clear or, uh, or you know, if, if it's there. Or, but because it was a decision led by God. We long for that day. I still long for that day. That it was a decision led by God. And it was the right thing to do. Family, as we get ready to pray this morning, verse number 13, it says that the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, says Moses, you will always be on the top and never at the bottom. Family, your leadership, what he's saying is, is that your leadership will be sought after. Men and women will constantly be looking for instructions on the ways you live by because the Lord has allowed you to become a trendsetter. And get this, you will just merely be acting like yourself. But others will begin to look at it as a grand gesture of greatness. And in my beloved fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, we learn to live by a creed early on in the Alpha life that, that reminds us that, that we are first of all, servants of all, we transcend all. And in that creed, that, that means that we understand that any given situation, we have been blessed with the intellect and the fortitude to step up to the challenge. And sometimes that includes leading from the front and sometimes that includes leading from afar. For example, a, a good leader family, it, it, this blessing that God is going to give us by walking in obedience, a good leader won't have to announce himself. He's comfortable with who God made him to be. And the text says that, that he will make you the head and not the tail. And family, I, I came to tell somebody that way too often we get in these power struggles with folk about who's in charge. But family, when we walk in the obedience, he makes us the head. There's no need for a power struggle. The way we communicate many times, it will set the tone for our leadership. Which leads me to the second part of the creed. Servants of all. Being the head makes, I believe that being the head makes me the chief servant. God elevated us to the head because he has entrusted us to lead through servanthood. Somebody got that this morning. Family, if you look at Jesus and everything he did, he led through servanthood. In the Bible study that Pastor Harris has been sharing with us in the book of Philippians, 
we looked at the six, I mean, the, the second chapter, verses six and seven. And it came to me this week, the voice Bible says, though he was in the form of God, he chose not to cling to the equality with God, but he poured himself out to fill a vessel brand new, a servant in the form of a man. Indeed, the very likeness of humanity, he humbled himself, obedient to death, a merciless death on the cross. To lead family means to walk in humility and to love mercy and to do justly. And to above and not to be above and not beneath. The third part of the decree is it speaks to we transcend all. Because of his obedience, Jesus transcended all. Which means he surpassed the level of expectation regarding requirement. In Philippians chapter number two, verses nine through 11, the voice Bible, it says, so God raised him up to the highest place, gave him a name above all. So when his name is called, every knee should bow and in heaven and on earth and below and every tongue should confess the name of Jesus. The anointed one is Lord and to the glory of God, our Father. Family, when we are obedient, God's power is invested in us. And, and his people will, will wonder why. The people will wonder why they hit you with everything they got and still you remain on your feet. I'm reminded of an excerpt from her poem, Still I Rise, My Angelou wrote that, did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Family, Deuteronomy 28, the last verse today. And, and this verse speaks so much for itself. We're going to pray right after. It says, all these blessings will be yours if you don't deviate at all. Neither to the right nor to the left from any other things I'm commanding you today. If you don't go and worship other gods. Family, as we said last week, we got to stay focused. Not deviate looking at everything that's going on around us and hoping and wishing for those things that don't lead us to the kingdom of glory. But we got to stay focused. He tells us not to deviate, but he tells us to stay the course. The blessings of walking in the obedience of God, family, is far beyond we could ever imagine. And it's more than anything we could ask for or think about. I want to encourage you today, Stay in the obedience of God so we can receive the blessings together. God bless you this morning. We never like to close our worship service without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And if that's you this morning, right where you are, if you'll come to the altar of your heart and allow God to bless you today. We believe that you pray this simple prayer that you'll get born again, you'll get saved. And, and so if that's you this morning, if you will just come to the altar of your heart right where you are and repeat after me. I say the simple prayer and say simply, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for what's been spoken into my life. I haven't done everything right in my life, and I know I've made some mistakes. So I come unto thee confessing all my sins, praying that you would renew me with the right spirit creating me a clean heart I believe that you died I believe that you were buried I believe that you resurrected to life just for me and so today I make you my Lord and Savior my Lord and Savior rule my heart rule my mind and help me to be what you called me to be thank you for saving me in Jesus name Amen family we believe if you prayed that simple prayer you got born again you got saved. I want to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church 
that is teaching the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, giving you an opportunity to grow in your gifts and in the ministry. Pray that you would uh, continue to join us in our worship stream. If you don't have anywhere to go right now, um, and if there's no place open near you, join a worship stream. Again, join ours. And when things open back up, feel free to come join us for worship services. Family, we want to extend the uh, join ours. And when things open back up, feel free to come join us for worship services. Family, we want to extend the uh, open the doors of the church this morning for anyone who just needs prayer. If that's you this morning, please come to the uh, altar of your heart. If you need prayer this morning, drop your name in the comment line. If you know somebody who needs prayer, drop their name in the comment line. So our intercessory prayer team can pray for them all week long. Family, we, we are a church that believes in prayer. We believe in the power of God. And we want you to experience the power of God like never before. So please drop your name in the comment line or drop your loved one's name in the comment line as we begin to pray uh, here this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you once again for another day's journey. Thank you that you have established us in you today. Thank you for continuing to iron out to us the, the blessings of walking in the obedience of you. You know, God, we know that this is not a bribe or, or uh, any way, shape, form, or fashion, a way to swindle us into your care because your scripture said that, that you wanted us to make a conscious decision. You wanted us to decide. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for loving us enough that, that you, you gave us space to decide on our own. You gave us free will. And yet you continue to bless us so richly, even when we don't deserve it. Oh God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless the ones who are, are in the altar of their heart this morning, looking for prayer, looking for answers, looking for wisdom, looking for what decision to make, God. Bless them right now. And even the ones that are sick in their body, dear God, you know all about what they're going through. So we pray that you would just bless right now every name that's in the comment line, every name that's, uh, that is present, oh God. We pray that you would allow your power to fall and your presence to be with them right now. And we claim healing in the name of Jesus. We claim deliverance in the name of Jesus. We claim power from on high to endure in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we claim healing in this land. We claim unity amongst your people in this land. We claim victory right now over Satan and all his tricks, his antics, and his ideologies. Lord God, we've been praying that he be cast down and exposed. Thank you for opening our eyes so that we might see the truth. Oh God, continue to bless us in the way only you can. You know what we stand in need of. So we ask that you do it according to your will. Not our will, but thy will be done, oh God. We bless your holy and divine name just for being who you are. And we thank you now for another day's journey. Blessed be thy holy name. And be with us as we get ready to go our separate ways. Lead us, guide us, and protect us as we go forth in your name. Help us to be a blessing unto someone else when we get to our destination. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would help us to keep what you gave us to live by and ration out what you gave us to give away. Help us to be good stewards of all your blessings. We love you, God. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, abide, henceforth, now and forever. And the redeemed of the Lord said, Amen. God bless you, family. We're so grateful that you invited us into your home again. Uh, pray that you would be having a blessed week. And we pray that you would continue to pray for us as we uh, continue to pray for you. Pray that if this ministry has been a blessing unto you, you will be uh, considered uh, being a blessing unto it. Find us on Give Lify. Sow whatever the Lord put in your heart to sow. Whatever you sow, it helps to keep the ministry thriving. God bless your family once again. I love you. God loves you better. And remember, no matter what the situation or the circumstance is, this thing that you're going through is simply another day's journey. God bless you.